Hi, in this video, we're going to show you some of the basic Linux commands. Some of these commands that we're going to be covering is the ls command to list files and directories. We're also going to look at the copy, the cp, and the move command, mv command, um, to move and copy files. We're also going to look at making folders and directories, so the mkdir command, and the cd command on how to move into files and directories. So let's get started. We're first going to start looking at the ls command. The ls command just works by itself. If you just want to type ls, you're able to look at all your files and directories within your current folder that you're in. What, what does that mean? Well, let me show you. You know, usually when you're in Windows or Mac or even Linux, we have something called a file manager, right? It is the program that we use to move and copy and paste files and folders to new, like if you want to move one file to another folder, this is the program that you use, right? Or if you want to look, hey, what do I have in my documents folder? You open up your file manager, you click on documents, and then you could see exactly what documents you have in there, right? That is your file manager. Well, we can do the exact same thing in the command line. We can look into a folder and see what's there, right? And so by default, right now, I am in this temp folder for demonstration purposes. So it is home Jared temp. And over here in the command line, I'm also in the temp folder as well. So when I look over here graphically is what you're used to in Windows and Mac and also in Linux, right? You can see that I have a work folder, a school folder. I have some scripts here. I have a quotes file, a numbers file, and something called donuts. Mm, love donuts, right? Well, and that's what I have in my temp folder. Well, how do we do that in the command line? Well, in the command line, if you're already in that folder, and you can tell I'm in that folder right here, is I can type the ls command. Look at that. I type the ls command. Look what I can see. I can see that donut mm, folder, right? Right there. Right? I can see this school folder, and it's blue. That's a folder right there called school. I can see the work folder, work. I can see the exact same things in the command line as I can see here in my file manager right? So that's the ls command. When you're, when you're working with the ls command and you just use it um, by itself, you don't have to put anything else with the command. Just ls shows you, boom, what do you have in that current directory? Now, let's say I want to see, oh, what files or folders do I have in my work folder, right? Well, graphically, right, when you're in Windows and Mac and everything else, you click on the work folder. Oh, Look at that. I have a username and I have an expense file in my work folder, right? And now I'm in my work folder. That's the way I do it, right? Well, how do we do that in the command line? Well, we use the ls command again. I can use the ls command and then indicate what folder I want to look into, the work folder, and then I hit enter. And look at that. I can now am looking inside the work folder, just like I'm looking inside the work folder here, and I can see this username and expense file, and I can see this expense, and I can see this user's name file, just like that. That is what the ls command does. It shows us what our folders and our files are, right, in a particular directory, right? When we use it by itself, it just shows us what's in our current folder what's called a current working directory, or when we indicate a specific folder or location, it will show us what is in that folder or in that location. All right. This is an example right here in the slides, which are available to you on Canvas. When you just type the ls command, you can see what's there. Or you can indicate a path. And the slide explains that as well, as long as you give it a location. So ls location will show you all the files and folders in that location, right? Let's talk about the touch command. Touch command is great. The touch command allows you to create text files, blank text files, right? And we're going to use the touch command a lot in this class, mostly to create example files, right? Because what, what's the point of creating a bunch of blank Word documents or something else like that. Well, the, the only point that we have for it is to um, 
for demonstration purposes, particularly if we want to start copying and moving files and things like that. We want to be able to create some blank files to be able to do that, right? Um, the touch command does some other things as well that we'll talk about later like it can change the, the access time and the timestamp on certain files and things like that. And that's a, officially what it's designed to do. But in what we're gonna use it to do is to create files and folders. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and show you how to do this. There's a screenshot here on the slide that shows you that you can create one or more files, blank text files, just by naming them. So you use the touch command and then you can either name one file or you can name as many a whole list of files and it will automatically create those so let me demonstrate that as a how that works here so again let me get go up a folder right I'm in my work folder here I want to go up back here so I'm in the same place as I am in the command line right right there with my donut text file right my school and my work folder right well I want to create some new files right so I'm gonna create just something really basic right I'm gonna create a file one and a file two well the way I do that is I just do touch file one and look at that look what happened over here file one magically appeared right there it is how, how can I see it over here in the command line I, I mean I, I did the command to create it but I let's see if I type the LS command <laughs> I type the ls command just list what I have and now it shows see previously I typed ls and there was no file one now I'm typing ls and now there's a file one right and we actually saw it because we have these open side by side the file one magically just appear and it shows that it's showing up as a text file right now we can do this graphically too you can do this and you go create a text file and you can create a blank text file and then you have to name it and you can name it file 2 or something like that if you want and then I hit enter and that creates a file 2 and look at over here I can see it as well oh, there's file 2 right so do you see we're just doing the same thing in the command line as we're doing graphically right so I can create multiple files using touch right let's say I want to do touch file 3 oops file 3 file 4 and so on I can just keep listing them I break them up by a space and then when I hit enter look at that file 3 and file 4 just magically appeared over there right I could type ls and there's file 3 there's file 4 just like that that's what the touch command does isn't that fantastic all right Let's look at our next command here. So we know how to make text files now, but how do we make folders, right? We wanna make folders or in Linux, what we call them is directories, right? So we're, let's not confuse the terms. So we're gonna be creating directories and we're gonna use the mkdir command. And again, it works similar to the touch command, right? There, where there are two parts, touch and then the name of the file you're gonna create. With the mkdir command, it's the same thing. If you look here at the example in the screenshot, they're doing the mkdir command and then they type the name that they want their folder to be, right? So it's make dir foo. They want to name the folder foo, F-O-O, -O, right? And so they just type that and then they do it. Now, just like touch where you can create multiple text files all at once, mkdir can make multiple folders all at once or directories right because we're in Linux so you can do mkdir directory 1 directory 2 directory 3 directory 4 boom all at once you hit enter all four are created instantly right and creating multiple folders like this all at once um, you can do it graphically but it takes a little longer right this is where the power of the command line really comes in so let me demonstrate some of this right let's create another directory called mkdir right and we're gonna call it play look at that play now it's a folder that's over here and if I type ls ls always lets you check you can see here I have a play folder too just like that right um, let me let me do another one here so where I can make multiple dir and I'll do folder one folder two two sorry it wraps around a little bit there 
but it's all one word. And I click enter, and now I have folder one and I have folder two here, right? Graphically, we would have to do right click, create a folder, name folder one, hit enter, right? Um, then I'd have to right click again, make folder. So if I wanted to create lots of folders all at once, like let's say I had to make 10, the command line ends up being a lot quicker, right? So that is the MKDIR command. Pretty straightforward. Let's look at our next command, the CD command, right? Well, how do we change the folder that we're looking in, right? I was in my temp folder and I know how to do that graphically, right? When I'm here, if I want to go into the work folder, I just click on it. Oh, and now I'm in the work folder and I can see the work folder. I changed directory. That's what CD stands for, change directory. Um, and then if I want to go back up, I can hit the up arrow or the back arrow and I can go up a folder to the temp, right? Because it's temp and then work. So now I'm in the temp folder. Watch, if I go up again, I'm in the Jared folder. I click on temp and then I click on work because work is inside temp. If I go up, I'm back into the temp, right? So how do I do that in the command line, right? Well, we just, again, this command, the CD change directory command has two parts to it, right? We tell CD change directory, and then you have to give it a location or a path or a folder of where you want to change to, right? So I believe we have another example here. For instance, if I want to move into my school folder, I type LS and I go like, oh, there's my, I have a folder called school, right? So I type CD and then I type the location or the name of the folder I want to be into, right? Because the name of the folder is really the location I want to go to, or what's also called the path, right? So I want to CD into school, and then I type LS, and I can see that now I'm in school, right? So let me demonstrate this live, okay? So for instance, I want to go into my work folder. Let me clear my terminal here it's a little easier to do so in the graphically I just click work and look at I'm there right really quick and easy right to click it makes it really easy here I'm gonna type LS to see what I have available for me I got oh I got work I got school I got folder one two and I got the play right everything else is a text file you can't really move into a text file right you can you can open up a text document and view it with what's in there but that's another command but let's talk about moving into the work folder. So if I want to work and in, move into work, I just type CD work. Now look at, now I'm in the work folder and I could type LS now and I can, sh I can see exactly what I have in my work folder, right? Now, how do I get back up? Like here, I hit the up arrow and that takes me back to where I was, right? Hmm. Well, that's different. Um, I can't type CD temp. No, I can't find it because it's looking for it here, right? Is there any temp? It says you want to change to another folder called temp. Well, it's looking here for it, but really I have to go back up, right? Well, the way in which we do that is we use two dots to indicate going back up. So just like here in the screenshot, we do CD space dot dot, and that takes us back to where we want to go. So let's look at that. So if I do CD dot dot, look at that, I'm back to my temp folder. I went back up. So that's just like I'm in work. I hit the up arrow and now I'm back just like that. So we can use CD to go into folders by just typing CD and then the path or the location we want to go to. And then if we want to go up a folder, back up to what's called the parent folder, we hit dot dot. So it's CD space dot dot will take us back up, right? Let's look at our next commands. Copy and move, right? How can we copy and move files and folders around, right? When um, the way in which we do this is um, 
these commands, we have two commands to do this. One, the copy command, which is CP, and the move command, which is MV. The move command can also rename files too. Let's talk about how we can do this. All right. There are three parts required for each one of these commands, for the copy and the move command. The first part is the command. Well, what command are you going to use? Are you going to copy it or are you going to move it? Well, what's the difference between copy and move? Well, copy is you're actually making a copy and you'll have two files at the end, right? You'll have the original and the copy. Move is you move it from here and it doesn't exist here anymore and now it lives here, right? That's moving. So, depends what you want to do. Do you want to copy or do you want to move the files, right? So, you use the command. And then the second part is you have to list the file you want to move right? Oh, I want to move, in this example, it's my new myfile.txt. So list the file you want to move. The third part here is the location or the path or the folder, right? All kind of the same thing um, of where you want to move that file to or copy that file to. So three part, it has to have those three parts, right? Because that just makes sense. Copy what you want to copy, where you're going to copy it to, copy or move, what you're going to copy and move, and where you're going to copy it to. Okay, so let's demonstrate some of this. Right, in the graphical interface, it's really easy, right? So much easy. Why do we need this terminal stuff, huh? Hopefully, I've already made that uh, aware as to why we need it, right? So. If we want to move file four graphically, we can just click on it, right? And then we usually just drag and drop it to play or something like that, right? Well, we can't just drag and drop in the command line, right? So how do we go about doing that? Well, let's move file one into the play folder, okay? So I'm gonna do the MV command to move. And then I have to indicate, what am I going to move? Well, I want to move file one. Okay, so that's the second part. The second part is, what am I going to move? File one. And then I want to indicate, well, where am I going to move it to? I think I said I wanted to move it to the play folder, right? So I indicate I want to move it to play. And remember, it's case sensitive, right? If I use a capital P for play, it has to be a capital P here. And then I hit enter. And look at that, file one disappeared from here. Where'd it go? Oh, it's right there. It's in play. It worked, right? Just the command line's magic, right? How can I how can I check on the command line? Because maybe I don't have this file manager. Maybe I'm on a Linux system, on my Linux system, or the server that you're working on, because many servers don't run with a graphical interface, even though Linux can. Um, I can't I can't pull up a file manager. How can I verify? that file one actually moved into play. Only if there was a command that would list things in a folder that we learned about earlier. Oh yeah, the ls command, ls play. <laughs> there it is, look at that, ls play. I want to look into the play folder and there it is. So I know it moved, right? Let's move another one. Move, I wanna move file two into the school folder, right? So move, what are you gonna move and where are you gonna move it to? Three parts, have to have all three, right? Because if you don't tell it where you're gonna move to, um, let's see what happens, you get an error. It's like, um, it's missing a destination. Doesn't know where you wanna move it, right? It's not, the command line's not a mind reader, right? So we need to have, the name of where we want to move it. You have to have all three parts, right? For the command line to understand it, right? So how can we verify the file two moved to school? Well, if we have the graphical, we can just click in it. Oh, file two is there, right? Otherwise I can use the ls command. Boy, has that come in handy. And I can look and see, oh, file two is inside school. If I just type ls, file two isn't here anymore. It must have moved. Let's try the copy command. Okay, um, let's copy file three to school as well. Let's try that. Copy file three. 
What are we going to copy? Where are we going to copy it to? School. Right? Copy command. What are we going to copy? Where are we going to copy it to? Don't worry about that backslash. That can that's um, you can have that there. You don't have to have it there. It's optional. You hit enter. Now, if I type ls, I still have file three here. What? Oh, that's right. I copied. So there should be two file threes now, right? Well, I have one file three, which as we see here in school, that magically appeared, right? And I have file three here. So I have file three here when I type ls. But I also have file three in school right there, just like that. So that is the move and the copy command. We use, uh, remember, the three parts to the move and copy command. The command, what you're going to copy or move, and the location of where you're going to copy and move it to. I hope this has been helpful for you, reviewing some of these basic commands uh, from the Linux command line. Um, and I hope you have a great day.